My presentation is very, very boring, but I'm so happy that so many people come. So, um, the topic is how I grew from zero to 1,500 subscribers in 12 months. Um, when Jeff asked me, I thought I made the name different. I thought how I grew from zero to 1,000. But then I realized it's like 1,500, so <laughs> that's all. I hope that you can do the same. Because in my case, what I found was the most important part that I picked the niche. I picked like something really specific. And in my case, I wanted to um, reach a Japanese audience, and I wanted to like talk about Germany, and I wanted like get everyone Japanese <laughs> speaking German, uh, because most most time of my day uh, I have to speak Japanese and I speak English, and I only speak German sometimes when I talk with my mom. So. Um, my videos have a specific topic, so my videos uh, are about Germany in Japanese and I teach like beginner German classes in Japanese and um, my, my goal was to try to rank for keywords and I saw that what could I rank for and my goal was to rank for the Japanese word of like German and Germany, or maybe German girl. So. Um, be because YouTube is a big place, so if you like find something specific, I don't know if you're like good at dancing salsa or if you're good at cooking. It needs to be like not only cooking, it needs to be like Japanese cooking rice balls. And then you have like really something specific. So the more you niche down, the easier it will be to grow an audience, I think. And um, you, you would say, what does a YouTuber do? Uh, I spend all my time editing and making videos, but that's only, I would say, uh, around like 10% of the time. Um, because like most of the time I spend doing marketing. So um, I, I do keyword research, I make a video, and I optimize it better, and then like, I spend all my time sending it like to social media. I send it to Facebook, I think I send it to Facebook groups. I remember of I, I guess like around 50, 50 German um, German class or uh, Japan groups. And um, I don't use LinkedIn so much because my boss is watching LinkedIn and I don't want to annoy him. <laughs> but I, I'm using Twitter. On, um, so, like, like as you see, like um, the traffic source I have external is only it's only twelve percent. So I, I get the most from like success of uh, suggested videos. It's twenty two percent. That means um, if you have a video. And like next to the video, there's like my face. That usually means that someone is doing something similar to me. And then luckily, uh, someone finds my video and is hopefully clicking on it. That's called suggested video. But also, uh, what is important and what's easy to rank for is YouTube search because YouTube is a search engine, same as Google. So if you want to know how to clean the toilet, you you put it in Google how to clean the toilet. But you can also put it in like YouTube and. Um, what I found is, if you use video, sometimes it's easier to learn. So, um, if you want to like learn something about IT skills, then um, like there's a lot of like things you can learn. And um, ranking for um, how-to titles is really easy, so that's 15%. And um, obviously, you see there are other parts I'm ranking for. So. Uh, I was always try to um, optimize every part of the data in order to get like the maximum like output. So um, my, you see, it's only like twelve percent, but like my, my my whole strategy is like focus on uh, social media marketing, and I get uh, uh, thirty eight percent from Twitter. The next number is Facebook, and then Google search. I don't know why people are searching on Google, but um, also like guest posts on blog, Instagram, Reddit, Quora, and LinkedIn. So. Um, I would say that I, I choose Twitter because my audience is Japanese, and if you have a Japanese audience, then um, Twitter is like an easier way to reach them because um, a lot of like people they prefer using Twitter instead of like Instagram. And I thought if I start Instagram, I have to take a lot of pictures. So for me, um, I, I prefer Twitter because you can post links, and uh, if you can get backlinks, that's like easier, and that's why I started with Twitter. And um, like the part of being a YouTuber is just like putting the video out. And what you can see here, that's like a really, really bad video. So you, you see it started, and then like everyone stopped. And then like it's only like, yeah, so that's like a really, really bad example. So um, if you're doing YouTube, then 
the first video you will do will look like that, and then you will learn. Then you will learn, okay, I see <coughs> that it's not a good video, so how can I get it better? And um, what's the great part about reading on the your own data is you can see when people are bored, so that's a good video. And you can see, like, they're, they're kind of interesting, then, like, a lot of people drop and then drop, but by the end still, like, they keep watching. So, um... For, for, for me, uh, personally, I figured that like smaller videos, it's like easier to get attention. It's like easier to keep people watching. So right now, I would say the YouTube algorithm is better to make like around like 30 minute videos. But if you're just beginning, getting someone to actually watch your content for 30 minutes is really, really difficult task. So uh, that's why I, I figured for myself, if I make a video of like one minute or two minutes or three minutes long, then people are actually going to watch it. Um, and my goal is to get at least like 50% because if I get more than 50% watch time, then YouTube is going to promote it. So, um, yeah. So you, you need to like keep doing and then you look at your own videos and then you see what's working and what's not working. And that one's not working, and that one's working. So, and that kind of like how you see like what the audience wants and um, like also, that's kind of how you improve. Because when when I was just starting um, YouTube, I was like working around like this. I was really like nervous. And then like you watch your video afterwards, and you see if you work around, then like it's it looks messy. And also, um, what what I you, you have a camera in front of you, and I have like back screen. So the first time I was not look not looking at the lens, I was looking actually in the um, like screen. And it's really difficult. It took me I would say like 50 videos to actually get to look because it's not like you're looking to a person. You're like looking to the camera, and you kind of have to think that it's like someone you're actually talking to. So um, getting used to camera, uh, it would take you I would say like 50 to 100 videos to like get used to doing it. And so just like. Keep, keep doing and then look at your analytics and like see how it develops over time and um, yeah so like focus on camera lens watch your body language and try to catch the first 15 seconds because like if someone clicks on your video and they're bored they're not going to watch it especially if they know you they will take the time and like watch it but if they don't know you they see like oh boring and then they go watch some cat videos or like cute dog videos um, so yeah. the first 15 seconds are really important and also um, what, what took me a time to develop was like the call to action at the end because um, when you have for example like a playlist and you have like three sentence then um, and by the way, in the next video, you would learn like what you're laying there, and then like kind of you need to connect two videos. And if you manage to get that, then people are keep watching your content. So um, that's like a really difficult part, I would say. So um, to get like the first 15 seconds, and then like um, a call to action at the end. Because at first I was telling everyone, hey. Uh, please tell me everything you know about Germany. Just comment on it, but like it's really difficult to comment. So, what's more easier if you tell them, "Hey, um, if you agree with me, then please write yes and or write no." And then the audience, they only have to write like yes or no. But if you ask them like an open question, then actually they they need to think about a question. And if they don't know you, it's um, really difficult to comment. And also, I feel like. Um, like viewers will like keep viewing my videos, they're like more likely to comment. But because my audience is Japanese, I would say um, uh, unless they're like regular viewers, they're not going to comment on it at all. So, and at first I started and I didn't have any um, any kind of like I, I had my video and I thought okay, that's about it. But then I realized okay, I need a thumbnail, and then I realized um, like a lot of people spend a lot of time making thumbnails, but I thought, okay, I want to um, kind of generate this community of Japanese who want to learn German. So I put my face and um, so like I took a picture of myself. And after I took a picture of myself, I, I made the video. Because for, for me, that was just easy. Because I just had to upload the video and I had to upload the picture. 
but a lot of people they spend a lot of time on making a good thumbnail and that's really important because that's like the first thing you see um yeah and wh what you need to know is when you make a thumbnail so for youtube uh there the pixel size is 1800 to 720 that's what you need to memorize because if uh if you make a difference it's um it, that, that's to optimize and if you want to share it on like Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn is different size so like every medium has a different size mm -hmm. and why, why is it important to know these numbers because if you look at your like phone like the biggest picture is getting the most attention mm -hmm. and then yes yeah, so that's the reason um, of course you can just automatically send your blog post or your, your YouTube video um, you, you could just send it to like Twitter but then like the thumbnail will be really small and try to like use the picture. I, I, 